следующее. Okay. Yeah, I can change first of all to Syria. Yeah, we had a little technical difficulty, uh, but we're back live at this point uh, with uh, Cesar Brello. Ah, okay. But now I, uh, you're, let me, let me stop to, to share. Yeah, we can see the share. We could, we, no, we yeah, yeah. See. yeah. I prefer, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, so I so just wanted to tell the so audience boring. we, no, we no, had, no, uh, yes. we had a, a technical difficulty. We lost a connection. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but, uh, but um, now do you, uh, we have, uh, I, I, you can see, you can watch me. I, yes. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. No, no. I yes, moved. we are watching. Yes, I move the telescope to Sirius again. Okay. Sirius star, and I show you Sirius. Sirius and oh, Sirius B. Sirius mm, with this field, I think that no, maybe next oh. week with the. Uh, it's really visible right now. Yes, it's yes. It's really but, far separated. Yeah, the first thing that I'm making now, naming star, and. I choose Sirius. Sirius. Okay. The okay is moving. Okay. Oh, you now, might be in. Oh, you're okay. Okay. And now I share screen. And you're serious. <laughs> yes. Uh -uh, but Sirius is, is, is. No, no, no. I think that. Uh, it's the S in, in the back of, of the. The building. Yep. Yes. Set. Yes. It did no set. No problem. Yes. M46. No. <laughs> yes. Now we can we can choose another one. We are choosing by Stellarium something over. Let me try with here in this area. We can try here, NGC 2437. That's an open? Yes. Um, I, I think that it's impossible to, to watch. M46 is like that in, it's, in this year. It wouldn't pick up the planetary in, in a single shot, huh? Exactly. But yes, maybe maybe the planetary inside the, the cluster is too, too fine to watch in a single shot, but okay. This is for the people, the telescope moving. <laughs> I am here. It's not a screen. <laughs> and we can Molly. change. Molly moves that. She does has four going at once. Could you imagine? Uh, yeah. Jesus, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't have wow. to imagine. I've seen it in action. Wow. It's like the four corners. It, it is very impressive. Well, here we have the cluster. You can see. Yes. It's very can nice. Change a little. The game and exposure. Look at that star. Yeah, it's still there. In this area, we have two, two um, different uh, planetary nebula, but are too fine. Are, it's too fine. Here is one this and maybe in this area is another one but the magnitude is nine it's around nine as you can see um really it's not easy 
I put the, the gain lower to have a little more of contrast. No, it's much better. More smooth. Looks like it's tracking really good too. Yes, yes. Fortunately, the tracking is okay. In ten seconds, it's okay. It's great. You know, I I am in the balcony and the, the space is small. Um, mm -hmm. But it's great. Well, we can. I can choose another one. In this Are area. they building? Do they uh, build? Yes. It? Ten yes, seconds, it gets brighter and brighter. You can see that that yeah. my the area is very small. The, the the portion of the sky is really small. Let me let me change the screen and. Share and I'll change again to Stellarium to make another choose of well M forty seven is okay I think forty seven ah it's okay forty seven is now for helmets maybe um, is to Maybe through hermits if it's not. So from there, those are much mm -hmm. higher guy, huh? Yes, I think that this one. Ocho Trenta, open star cluster, butterfly maybe. Mm -hmm. So when Let you me, uh, when you do a the, run. Sorry. Tell me, Go tell me. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I noticed uh, Caroline's you cluster. You have to plan your night because those buildings can wreak havoc on your Abs Absolutely. Target. Yes, yes. You need to, to, to make a plan because it's, it's really when you are choosing something. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can try with... 24 with this, you can try. Let me let me try. Let's see. So 24, 0, 9. Okay. It's a clear part of the sky. We are changing to see Caesar, if, if a, we have a, something. Yeah, yeah tell me. Question. Uh, what software are you running to control the telescope? Uh, in this moment, I using I'm using only the the proprietary software of of Celestron for ruling the telescope for ruling the telescope. But the software that you can see, Stellar. software of, that you can see is a shark cap for the image. I see. Are you a Looks CWO? Like a tracking might have stopped again. Yes, but it's, it's tracking. I don't know why, because it's, it's okay. I'm trying with a... I don't know you why, don't because it's... Mm, no, 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 it's something like a, like a something... Ah, okay. There it goes. Oh, because I, I, I can see that it's tracking now. Now. Okay. Sometimes when we're um, viewing objects straight up with the big dob, you're in Dobson Hole, and it's really hard to get that object in there, when, yeah. uh, you know, 10 feet off the ground. <laughs> This is crazy because it's something where I don't know because it's the it's tracking perfectly, but it's ridiculous because I can I can see and it's tracking. Wow! 
I don't know why. Because if I start to, to make a, a light stack, that we can we can try. Mm, I don't know. Well, I can change. Okay. I don't know why. The picture is is as like uh, no tr no tracking, but I think that is a something of of the memory of the computer, you know, that don't show the new one. Okay. Well, sorry guys, but <laughs> I can't. I can try more because it's maybe maybe this setup I I'll try uh, next week. I, I try in the week to to have more uh, so because the camera is new and maybe something that that I can I I I I'll change the maybe the software that manage the the camera or. I can use a software like Nina or another one mm -hmm. to use all together. Um, I but tonight I I took a lot of pictures of open clusters. Um, I'll process. Uh, I'll start to process uh, tomorrow to show you next week, and um, I'll show you a more live image because. Tonight, <laughs> tonight. Well, I wanted I don't to say why, because it's working. I wanted to say, Cesar. I wanted to say this is real amateur astrophotography. <laughs> yes. Sometimes we don't this know does what happens. Sometimes happen. That's sometimes yes. these things happen. You know, but we fix prefer, them and we come again. Yes. So yes, that's just a part of the show. Uh, this that is a, a real thing. You know, um, maybe maybe in in few minutes all start to to work again. But well, I can show you one <laughs> one cluster tonight, and it's okay. <laughs> um, but it's something that that um, yes, it's like you tell me. It's a, a real situation for amateur astronomy. It is because it's fun because you never never have the all completely resolved. It's, Anything is in many many years that I make some photography and observations. Uh, this is normal. This is the normal situation. Sometimes you can make some pictures uh, if you don't have clusters, you know, um, you have some technical problems or something. And say, okay, I, I don't understand why now <laughs> because it's working. Is the 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 plug the all is perfect and don't don't show any any uh, kind of, of problem but i don't know why <laughs> we need to get nico over here for a minute yes and, uh, absolutely <laughs> absolutely absolutely nico he yes. doesn't need you know that yes. picture <laughs> that picture was mine well you know when 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 you are doing things in front of people you know you hope yeah. for everything to go flawless and perfect yeah, uh, but absolutely. I too have you know run into uh, uh, to issues, you know. So and often you know yeah. it, you got you know doing astrophotography, it is always typically a complex setup, you know. Mm -hmm. So yes, you know, absolutely. Because yeah, you have uh, a lot of different things. To a work. lot of things, exactly. Yes, to fail. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, and let's just layer on top of it. You're trying to do a live stream and, yeah. you know, <laughs> so the pressure's Absolutely. on, but no, it's cool. Um, we, we all, we've all been through it and, uh, uh, you know, and, and this is how you know that this program is live. <laughs> so yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's happened really many, it's happened and, many times. Yes, and I am you very not, much. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure yeah, because thank you. I know that that the, you and, and the people uh, understand things. Sorry, but it's something yeah. that 
next week I'll I'll uh, show you more things and maybe you have some problems. So you know, no problem, no problem. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Take care, Caesar. Have a good night. Thank you. Evening. Okay. So, um, John. Hello. Yeah. Your your head's a little cut off oh. here at the top. Let me let me readjust. I was just there. You, uh, let's put your shirts a little put your smack dab in the middle of the Milky Way. There, there you go. Well, yeah, I'm out here at um, Amboy Crater. This is a great shot, Adrian. I hope you're there still. But uh, it's a little chilly out here, so I had to put this shirt on. But I forgot my jacket. <laughs> you had to put the shirt on. <laughs> Normally, you go shirtless. Yeah. So. Well, you know, it's the desert, so it's warmer here. Oh, today yeah, was a beautiful, sure, of course. beautiful day today. It was absolutely gorgeous in California. Um, windy, mm -hmm. clear, crystal clear, you know, and mm -hmm. they're predicting the storm should be here in the morning. So I figured... Another storm, that. really? Another one. Oh, my gosh. So we've been getting, you know, the rain we need out here, and, yeah. it, and it cleared the sky. I mean, I had the most incredible view of M51, uh, the other night and um, mm -hmm. the transparency was just unbelievable, you know, and, and it's like with astronomy, you know, you have to check your clear sky clock and make sure your weather's good. But sometimes it just, it doesn't add up what they tell you and, and you get a great view and uh, that's kind of what happened. So it was really nice to get that after months and months of rain. I think the last time I really went out was in September or October. Right. October. Yeah. So, so that I think that they they were they were calling rivers of rain uh, that were coming into California, and so far, you guys have already. I think you've had twelve of them or something like that. So yeah, and there, there's more coming, which you know is, wow is great. You know, I hope you know Vegas gets that aqueduct full. Because uh, that thing was like almost empty. They were finding some crazy stuff out there. Yeah. Old cars and, and all kinds of stuff, you know, from the early days. Hmm. But uh, the rain was a gift. You know, we really needed it. I think um, Mother Earth is giving us what we need. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have quite a few pictures here. Great. Let's uh, start with. You know, I really like that Owl Nebula that um, Molly, yeah, was, Molly was doing. Yeah, this was um, this is actually a sketch of mine. I wanted to show. So that was uh, the Owl looking. Uh, we had a good night that night. Oh, yeah. with the 32 and the 28. It has a little color to it. Um, but that is a great nebula and, and a fun one to see. You know, Ursa Major has so many great things in it uh, between the galaxies and and then that planetary. That's an amazing planetary to look at. So I was hoping she'll get that done and we can um, we can see that, you know, when she's finished, because that's an that should be an amazing picture at the end of the day. So I'm going to uh, put a few more together here. I'll try to get them in order. So I, I took my granddaughter uh, when when I was looking at the moon in the backyard. I took her out back with me and, and the wife, and we were looking at uh, the moon. We saw the eclipse one night, mm -hmm. uh, and she would she was going the moon, the moon. And it was the most precious thing to see her, you know, mm. enjoying that, looking at the moon. Sure. And, and um, you know, again, having your granddaughter to look at stuff, it's quite amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, you know, that's really where I want to excel to see her is when, you know, when she gets a little bigger, I can take her up to the mountain and um, show her a lot of this stuff firsthand and, and we can really start to interact and I can teach her all about space oh, yeah. and the heavens and yeah you'll be oh yeah I'm so excited about I mean, that you know kids learn so fast you know it's amazing and uh 
Okay, you know, I've put my list together. So they, that's Mars. Especially if they get to stay up late at night and look through a telescope. Oh, yeah. she's But she's kind of, uh, she liked it. You know, this one, oh, yeah. we're looking at uh, the moon on this one. Um, I had it in the daytime because I wanted to, you know, show her some. It was sunset, of course. Yeah. And, uh, I wanted to show her. And there's another one with her. Oh. Yeah. And that's the wife. And that's your wife. Yeah. Yep. She looks like she's loving every minute of it here. Yeah. And, and uh, she was going, the moon. And that's the that's the picture I was able to put together that night. Wow. So, yeah, that's an amazing um I think that's Plato, the crater mm -hmm. in the shadows. And look at that giant boulder. It's absolutely amazing yeah. how big uh, some of the boulders are on the moon. Yeah. And this is another shot that I did. And if you recall last month, that was um, similar to what we saw at Mount Wilson. But this is mine through that nine and a quarter. That's Archimedes mm. crater over there. Yeah. And Timotharis, I think. I can't remember the name. When you uh, zoom back, it looks it just looks photographic. I mean, it's really yeah. Fun. That uh, that's the digital. You know, that's the ability. Uh, and Gaussian blurs allow you to smooth out your uh, texture, which is mm -hmm. a neat thing. Uh, that's the eclipse from that one night, uh, the total one we had, mm -hmm. the blood moon, the, the last one. It was a very good one, by the way, very long for a change. This is me in my element. There's the nine and a quarter again, and uh, the porta ball at Mount Pinos, getting ready to uh, do some work, you know, have fun, look at the heavens, sketch some things out. And uh, here's a close-up. As you see, I might look like an yeah, alien. You look like a little alien there. <laughs> yeah, because I am an alien. Uh, <laughs> if you would think about this universe and, and we're humans, and I mean, to anyone else, <clears throat> we would be considered an alien. And um, true. I'm proud to be one. I'm proud to be here and uh, have access well, to this you, equipment. You, you think about it, though. I mean, we have people in space and our space station yeah. 24 hours a day seven days a week year it's, round yeah. you know and uh you know so we are a spacefaring species in that regard and we've got our appliances all over the solar system mm -hmm. voyagers are out there you know uh the uh, new horizon spacecraft is still working and uh still collecting data you know so I think that someday, you know, we'll probably be out there, get out, you know, way out. Once we figure out, you know, the technology, I think every year it gets better and better. You know, the stuff that is getting figured out. Um, it's sure nice to have all this great equipment and uh, be able yeah. to do this, to look at that, you know, uh, the splendor of the Milky Way when you're under it and you look at it so grand and the, and the color and, and you just feel connected it's like it's so amazing to uh get out and experience it from a dark sky site like uh, adrian's yeah, yeah you, you know uh john i was watching a documentary about uh mountain climbers and all of them you know as they're as, as they're climbing these mountains and stuff like that some of them some of them are free climbers they they climb these incredibly crazy yes. vertical uh reaches uh without ropes you know and uh they they say the sense of calm and peace that comes over them you know um i think that a lot of astronomers feel that you know once they are because they're all getting into this state of flow you know mm -hmm. and um and that is something that uh, all of us try to get back to one way or the other you know especially in this nervous, you know, crazy, fast-paced world yeah. we live in, you know, um, we need to reconnect with nature as much as possible. And those mountain climbers do it uh, by, you know, putting their hands and their feet on the cliff and realizing if they slip, that's it, you know? 
it, it's amazing the places uh, that they do it are all like the most awesome places to do astronomy yeah oh that's you know, true usually uh could you imagine looking at doing milky way shots from the top of mount everest oh, i mean yeah. Yeah. you would be touching the heavens from there yeah. uh, well almost just, all of those documentaries include shots of you know time lapse of the milky way rising behind the mountains and stuff like that and so you know all of those people that are out there uh you know, doing this uh, are also connecting with the sky, you know, so. You know, the Milky Way, when uh, when I'm out doing public star parties and I show people an edge on galaxy like 4565 or 891. Yeah. And then I tell them, or even M82, especially the Cigar Galaxy in Ursa Major, mm -hmm. it's a starburst galaxy. It's a feeding at a very rapid rate and it can't digest all the uh, stars it's eating. So it spits them back out the plasma. Oh, and, um, but anyway, uh, when you look at those galaxies and you see that dust lane, I explained to people that you're looking at the Milky way in the same way that you just saw that edge on galaxy. That's 30 million light years away, but you're here inside the arm looking in at the center okay. of our galaxy. That's right. And you're like right up close and it's like so wonderful to compare that to like a, a real good edge on galaxy. Mm -hmm. And and then when they put it together, you know, when you feel that understanding and you realize it just, you get like a real uh, cool just feeling because you're looking at that galaxy going, you know, wow. So yeah. we're right here. And yeah. that one was way back out there. Yes. So yeah, uh, it, it's great. I'm just, that's why I love this hobby and yeah. there's so much that you can uh, connect, you know, back to with, uh, with our scopes, you know, and even naked yeah. eye, you don't even need an instrument, but so this was one uh, Mirko did. I wanted to share it. It's Tycho, the creator. Oh, this is an image, right? This yeah, this is, yeah, this is Mirko shot. Okay. I just did wow. a little, uh, just to, to make the craters pop. So you see how much that thing must have hit. That thing really, and, and you can see the curvature of the moon. That's got to be one of the biggest craters around. Oh, yeah. I think the, the bottom of the moon is worse. And that's uh, the same thing that I did in the style of like a Claude Monet. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the great painter. A French painter so it's uh the crater on lily pads in a, in a you know in a pond just was having fun so that that Tycho crater is 85 kilometers in diameter that's 53 miles across so I think if you were standing at the edge if you were at the edge of of uh, Tycho, you might have a tough time seeing the other side. I don't know. You know, uh, we, you'd have to take in the cur curvature of the moon into account. And uh, I wonder if you're at the top, if you could see the other side. Am I back? Am I back? You're back. You're Was back. that me? I don't know what happened. <laughs> I just froze. <laughs> this is really crazy stuff. We had a crazy night. That's right. Yes, we have. Okay. Uh, I got to get back to my. Jeez. Yeah, I was talking about the you know the size of Tycho Crater, which is okay. Yeah, I heard three miles across. So, um, you know, and I I was I was wondering, you know, if you were standing at the edge of the crater, looking out, you know. Uh, would you see the other side of it? Um, how many miles is that crater across? Is it like 50, 70? 53. 53? Um, yes, you could. But, you know, uh, the, well, the, oh, the is smaller, smaller than the smaller. Earth, no, right? I, so, that's the tough question. I, I would be. Yeah, the, the moon's smaller. So that, and there's would, no that would be a good question for Robert Reeves. You know? Yes, that's a real good one there because you, you can't. <laughs> 
I mean, wow. Cause like on the John Hancock, we were trying to see a hundred miles, you know, the building in Chicago yeah. and uh, we could only see, you know, so far cause the haze, it was so hazy that day. And um, we had a real hard time seeing, you know, far, but I would say, well, somebody out there might know the answer to that question, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm checking right now. Okay. So uh, let's go with some more. There's my little buddy again. You know, he's in every shot uh, on some of my moon paintings because he's always there with me and it got chilly. So I had to put a sweater on. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I brought him in on the couch. He's better now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he's, he, he's, he's the best dog him. because, you know, he doesn't complain when I'm out there doing my hobby. He just wants to be there and he lets me do my thing and I, I sure. walk him around. He's a great, great friend for astronomy. Oh, yeah. This is a, a painting I did. So um, I'm going to go back a few years uh, with my father would always take me to these great places. And, and he took me to Argentina and- uh, Yeah, you mentioned Patag you were in Patagonia. Patagonia, and, and um, I have to say, it was one of the most beautiful trips I ever took uh, mm -hmm. to see that sky down there and, and everything that they offer mm -hmm. and, and the beautiful waterfalls and the mountains, the Andes, when we flew in, I was, I was looking at Corvus, uh, the constellation, I could see it and I could see um, it was totally in a different place. I was almost lost. But anyway, to, to get back to where I was saying is my dad took me to Zuatanejo and this is the, the little bay that we were hanging out in. Uh, we'd fish early in the morning and we'd come in and they would have these huge fires and cook these great you know, meals, we'd wrap the fish in palm leaves and eat. And um, yeah. they were like primitive fishermen. Look at their boat. And and that was like the sun rising that morning. So it was so that we're going fishing. Cool. And then that, this was at night, another night. When uh, we landed there, we went down to the beach from the hotel. And uh, this was the first view we had was the moon setting across the bay and the waves crashing and it, it was just unbelievable so i painted this years later um from you know memory of it and uh it was just a magical place and a magical sky everything yeah. it's wonderful to see that's those cool. it's cool your dad did that with you that's really yeah cool. th this was another one uh this was another trip we took and, and the moon was setting and uh this one I really liked. It was a very special trip. Hmm. And uh, the stars were unbelievable uh, that trip. Probably because I was getting bigger and I, I knew what they were. <laughs> so yeah. I wanted to watch. I, I only use binoculars. But, you know, you, you can do a lot of great observing with just a pair of binoculars. You'd be surprised. Uh, when you And they're easy to carry. So they're ready at any moment. Right. So that was, that was a good picture. You could even see the earth shine. On the moon, it was crystal clear. Another flower shot. I like to throw one in here and there. Mm -hmm. These are walking my dog. I, I just get blessed to see these and I love to share them. Uh, you know, Mother Nature and, and you know, it's unbelievable the extent of uh, creation and beauty and color. It's just amazing to see uh, every day. And, you know, I just keep looking up. Uh, yeah. On this one, I look down, but usually up. This is the 30 I was talking wow, about. Wow, that's a big scope. Look at that. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the same same maker as mine. So mm -hmm. there's a chance I could end up with this. Uh, it's only two inches bigger, but it is an F5. So that's a 150-inch focal length, 30-inch. Mm -hmm. So if you go with Zenith in this, you're going to need it like an 18-foot ladder. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big so what size for, focuser on, is on that one uh that's a standard two inch feather touch inch. Well, you you don't get the three inch on a dom until you're norm fulnam and, and they're building the explorer scientific <laughs> yeah you need the, to put a the, three inch focus yeah if you get it so 150 yeah. times 25.4 
It's 3,810 millimeters focal length. Yeah, right? that's like bigger than a C14. Right? And so we have a 100 degree, 30 millimeter. It's three, three inch. Piece, three okay. Inch. And so you divide that by 30. That gives you 127 magnification. And 100 that degrees divided field. by 127. That eyepiece could get a roughly a 0.8 degree wow it's almost a degree yeah. what could you put in there what what would be an object that you can't oh, well, usually uh, like um like a full a, moon a, would not quite fit okay in. it would be right right and so but how about the veil could you imagine the veil the in veil that through YouTube, it the that kind pickerings, of uh, you couldn't yeah. fit andromeda because it's bigger than the moon yeah right that's three that's crazy about. yeah wow um, but no. things like uh, the Trifid, um, oh. uh, Orion, the Orion Nebula would look pretty awesome in it, you know. Didn't you use one at um, at the 60, one of those three-inch ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I, I remember. Yeah, that's but it's still, was. you know, that is such a long focal length from that 60. Yeah, inch that's 100. Uh, what was yeah, it? It's hundreds it's of magnification. I can't I remember was like, exactly what the... It's but amazing how much that that, that, that thing was um, when they told when someone told me what it was actually running at. Like a low low power eyepiece is like some insane like six some, or yeah they have power. they have four inch <laughs> coffee can size eyepieces for that telescope. I mean it's amazing. You know mm -hmm. astronomy is a crazy thing. Like tonight we got stricken with a lot of weird technical stuff, and these things always happen. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys use a push job, you know, oh, I never have trouble. And then then uh, something freezes up or the mirror gets dirty or, you know, dirty there's always or, something or the weather. Know, some connector yeah. rod or something, thread you know, pops loose or something, you know. It's part of the game, you know, Murphy's Law. You just have That's to, right. you know, get, get through the, the things and and the reward is you just get the best views you've ever seen. And um, so this was a night that, you know, I wanted to do something, but the moon again was cloudy and then mm -hmm. it, sunset came and it just kind of went transparent. And there was this a red, just beautiful crimson clouds and, and the moon was just mm -hmm. peeking through. And so I, I put this one together and this was a cloudy night. So and I, I actually liked it. That's yeah, um, beautiful. One of the fellas said, you know, you just taught me something. He goes, I went inside and said, I'm not going to do anything tonight because it's cloudy. And then I saw this and I regret that I didn't stay outside. And I told him, you know, that's what's so great about these pictures. You can see things even though you don't have a view, you know, tonight. Yeah. So you can, you know, look at somebody else's work and, and stuff. So. That's great. You know, that I'll, I'll tell you a story. I've told it on Global Star Party before, but uh, when Halley's Comet was at its peak in California, we had a, um, uh, it started to rain, you know? Oh, no. And I just go, you know, I, I had this big Dobsonian. It was a Coulter Dob, and I had surf racks that I would <laughs> mount the telescope up on top of this car. And uh, it looked like a jet engine oh, <laughs> man. coming off of, off the top of the car. And uh, anyway, so I just go, look, I'm just going to go try to see this thing anyways. You know, I was just driven. Um, and so I I told some a couple of friends, you know, come with me. Uh, we're going to go try to see this thing, you know. And so we drove out to as far out as I could, okay, to where I knew that the comet would be up, you know, right. and there was this kind of short window, uh, but it's still raining and, and my telescope's getting wet. You know, I throw the mirror into the scope because the mirror, you know, could come out pretty uh, easily. And so I throw the mirror in the scope. Water's running down my tube. Oh, okay? no. The, the, the mirror's starting to get wet. Okay. And, uh, so I throw in, a, I only had like a 32 millimeter uh, Urfal eyepiece, you know, if you guys <laughs> remember what an Urfal Old is. School. And, <laughs> and John, the clouds part. No. Okay? 
just for a few minutes and Hallie's Comet's right there, okay? <laughs> and so I got this great view at the best that it was going to be seen in Southern California for just a few minutes. My friends got to see it. We all wow. you know, confirmed, yeah, this is it. And, uh, and after we were done looking, you know, it is the clouds just went whoop like that and shows over, you know, and I took my telescope home and. And yeah. it never rains in California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except Wait. when there's something you want to see. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the, that's the real bad part is when you wake up after being yeah. up all night and someone says, you better get your scope inside. It's raining. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah, Like the Oki techs, they get those rain, rain parties. Oh yeah. They get yeah, bursts of rain out there in the plains. That's true. Always that's want... a great shot. Uh, John. Oh yeah. That, that yeah. was um my little adventure. You know, I do mine. It's more of a, just a, public outreach program i don't charge for this because you know for me i just like to to give it to to yeah. people because i have this great instrument and um you know, i've been doing it a long time and and people always ask me you know stuff because i got the scope and this was at mount pinos it was a great star party years ago and uh this guy goes john i gotta get a shot of you and uh, he did the the Milky Way tracker stuff where they have a dolly on on rails and they do that okay. time lapse. He was doing uh, work. Uh, Stephen Conifer was his name. Did some amazing work. And uh, this was one of his shots that he did for me. And uh, that's Mount Pinos again. Yeah, so, it looks really cool. It looks like, yeah. a, uh, looks like a record album or something, you know, so. Wow. Very cool. It was... Uh, the stars and and then you know the heavens that's my song <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's so unbelievable to be out there under the yeah. uh, dark sky site when you get out there and, and you're under the stars it's like when we would drive up to the mountain we'd be like we couldn't bear to wait any longer we're like mm -hmm. we got to get up here man i remember my buddy almost drove off the side of the the oh. he missed the on ramp almost because we were looking at the stars and then he went yeah, off. The yeah, yeah, that's a lesson was, to all you astronomers yeah. out there. And you're going out stargazing. Keep your eyes on the road. Yeah, okay. don't be looking at at serious. Don't be looking at the Milky Way as you're driving up the mountain. Because yeah. I'll tell you what, it it was unbelievable when when you get up there. And I've never been to dark skies like that since I was a kid, you know. But yeah. it was unbelievable. I got a couple more. So this was from the other night. This is my newest version of this. Uh, this oh, is the, the 51. World. I was getting the best view. Uh, the transparency, you know, was mm -hmm. just uh, probably the best it's been in a while. You know, I think that the vulcan volcanism might have something to do with with the sky. And, and a lot of people have noticed that it, uh, the squim, that reading, you know, the dark sky, that people use you know caesar was talking about it oh yeah uh, so you know don penzak had mentioned uh that he's been recording the squims and it over the last two years it's actually gotten brighter but that you know they've had a lot of those led lights but um you know it's a combination of probably the smoke and the moisture and all the yeah, stuff the dust that, in know, here and Probably right. all the rain really made the sky a lot more transparent. Yeah, so this was really, you know, and this wasn't Mount Pinos. This is uh, Ojai is what I was getting this from. You know, it's basically facing Mount Pinos if you're looking at um, M51. And the moon was out, but uh, there were some high clouds. And I, I had a chance to stay up late, and this thing was up all night. So I, I got a great look at it. Really, really proud of that one. It's probably the yeah. it was better than last week's, right? Look at well, look at the, you know, the it, spirals. It, and, yeah, the spirals are really and that that other galaxy. Amazing. And you know, with the big telescope like that, or you know, you could get the same thing using a nice refractor like that. Those uh, there were a couple guys that had that uh, eighty millimeter, I think triplet one carbon fiber mm -hmm. APO and. And uh, he was sitting down and I had my scope and, and he was taking pictures and, and uh, his picture rivaled mine, what you could see in the eyepiece. So 
you know, it's good to do have all the equipment. Uh, you know, there's learning curve takes more time to do the photography, but it's a great reward and, and they're all tools to um, get the best result and learn the most you can about this stuff because, you know, we're, we're lucky to have this equipment now. Uh, not yeah. everybody had equipment like this back in the day. Oh, yeah. That's right. This is just a, a closer. This was a, a little thing I did. It's actually the Trifid Nebula. If you look at it. What? That's the Trifid. Okay. It's just a, an abstract, uh, like a oh, yeah. Italian style painting. Right. Um, looks like uh, looks like monks in red clo yeah. cloaks or something. Right. It, it was just a little fun thing I did. Yeah. Um, you know, and that was from uh, the picture that I had. I could probably put that up uh, just to close it, show you again. The real one that I used uh, was incredible that Mirko took through the uh 28 and that that was you know what it was created from i see so yeah marco's a great astrophotographer yes and uh i'm you gonna should, uh, invite him on he'll be coming sometimes. yes i'm gonna pin him down and, and uh i'm also trying to get andrew uh he's a big time sketcher on cloudy nights really great uh mm. at what he does and, and that's his specific is sketching through the telescope and uh, direct eyepiece views, you know, because what the, the direct eyepiece view will show you is like a real view, uh, what you can expect to see at, at a star party. And, um, you know, you have to study these objects. You can't just look in the eyepiece and go, oh, that's it, you know, because your eye takes quite a amount of time to dark adapt to get your receptors yeah. your rods and cones and you know sometimes i even use a little cloak and i'll tell people put this over your head it's a, it's a piece of duvetine or just pull your hood over and shield the peripheral light and then and close your eyes for like a minute just yeah. to, and let your eyes get really dark and then open them and stay covered on your peripheral and look in the eyepiece and you'll see a lot more yeah and it, it's right. a great trip. And relax. Yeah. And relax. You know, yep. so I had um, I had my eyes uh, recently. I had my eyes dilated with my eye doctor. I just get an eye checkup. And right. I asked him to measure my eyes when they were fully dilated. And with the uh, with the uh, whatever it is, the the drug or whatever it is they put yeah, in the, the drops they, they yeah dilute. the drops that dilate your eye like that uh wow. my eyes dilated to about six and a half millimeters and wow so, yeah i'm 63 <laughs> so that's know, pretty good um, but he said on average he said your eyes are probably you know dark adapted um probably about six you know okay. i'm happy with that you know yeah, I mean, I, a you know, lot of times everybody says, "Oh, you're over, you're over forty years old. You're all, I still only dilate to five, You know, but um, I've always had pretty good night vision. And uh, but I recommend if you're a visual astronomer, uh, you know, go get your eyes checked. Anyways, you probably if you haven't done it in a while, you need to do it, and um, you know, get checked for glaucoma or whatever and ask the doctor to check your fully dilated eye, you know? Uh, and that's how you choose, that's how you can choose the lowest power uh, eyepiece that you should be using right. with the telescope. So you know? I, can, I can elaborate more on that. So now I haven't gotten glasses because I'm stubborn. In, in my mind, I feel like if I get those glasses, my yeah. eyes are going to get adjust that. Then they're just going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. Yeah, you're so gonna, I, your I, eyes are going to get lazy. I'm, I'm with you. I'm the same way, you know. And uh, uh, but you know, I, I lost, I lost my cat's eye. I used to be able to. I think I'm still can see really good. I can okay. still see. Um, so I saw Stephanie's quintet, and I had to verify this in a five inch. Uh, the old Celestron F7, I think it was, okay. the telephoto. And I have a, a diagonal. It's super sharp. I got it uh, from Mark Penderson that used to work at Wooden Hills. Remember Mark? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, Mark 
uh, sold it to me and it's unbelievable, but I saw Stefan's in there and this was uh, just like a year and a half ago. So I think my eyes are doing good, but you know, I found Jones one uh, with uh, my 18. I had it memorized in Pegasus and, and an astrophotographer said, no, no, that's impossible. You can't see it. And uh, I go, it's in there. I had a filter. And he put his camera on there and did a, a quick short and it was there. And he verified it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I raced him to um, M2. 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 Mm-hmm. We, we looked at M5. M2 is close. So I did it with a uh, five millimeter eyepiece. I didn't change it out. And I did a go to basically. But it was a push to. It was a one in a million shot. But yeah pretty good but uh my my thing is i think uh as you get older you're when you like uh, like i have a 30 millimeter i have a little trouble with the higher power with my eye uh keeping the edge of the field sharp you know the paracore has helped but it, it um i get a spherical aberration a little curvature you know because my eye has um deteriorated a little bit my eyesight and that's that's where i really notice it is on the wide field eyepieces you know yeah and uh so like you said you should get them checked and um i i was able to figure it out that through a a checkup that that's why is because my eyes uh i guess my exit pupil what what does that mean it gets it closes smaller or than than when I was younger. Well, that's what they say, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, a a number that we throw around in the industry that if you're over 40 years old, that maybe your eyes won't dilate more than five millimeters. Well, there's nothing to base that on really, Mm -hmm. you know, because everybody is different, you know. so there, there are ways to measure, you know, there, there's uh, the uh, method of taking uh, Allen wrenches, you know, metric Allen wrenches. Oh, right. And holding them up to your cheek so that the bar is mm-hmm. just right up next to your eye. And you, you get it an Allen wrench that just, just starts to totally blank out, you know. And that's your, your that's a good trick. So and that's, that's, that's one way of doing it. Um, uh, you know, but you know, if you want to get hyper accurate with it, mm-hmm. have your eye doctor do it, you know, so, right. you know, so that, that's, that's the deal. Well, that those hundred degree eyepieces help a lot because it, it flattens the field and, and the, the, what are they're 92 degree? Like when I use yeah, those eyepieces, those, I don't have... those are really comfortable. You know, they yeah. have like 20 millimeters of eye relief on them. And the, the eye relief is better for me, you know, because. Yeah. It just opens up. I get the full field and, and it's sharp to the edge. Mm-hmm. That's what's so nice about those. I really like them. <clears throat> and um, too bad they didn't make a 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be a big, huge eye that, piece, you know. I but know. Uh, but it, it too would be a three inch, you know, mm-hmm. uh, because you have to have that big field lens in there. Well, well, John, I, thank yeah, you. That's, Thanks for that's sharing about all again. I got this week, and I appreciate it. It's thank been you. a uh, thank everybody for hanging in who's ever left after all of our technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can't that's explain right. that. That's a unusual situation for everyone. Yeah. But um, so hopefully, we hung in. Viram is, is watching on YouTube. I think it's Andrew Corkill. And uh, he says, Scott, can we use those drops before a star party? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. I wonder That's if right. That yeah, work. maybe I should sell a kit, you know, or something. Yes. You know? I'm sure it would I be dilate. illegal. So, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> I need the x-ray glasses if you get those made up. Get those, get those going, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Hey, Andrew. Yeah, so uh, okay. I do want to thank all the presenters uh, that came on. Um, you know, uh, we had a great lineup. Um, you know, the uh, the group was, uh, of course, Carrie Latelier. Uh, you know, she was our co-host tonight, and so we want to thank. Congratulations her. too for that. That's her. a big one. Yeah, astronomy picture of the day. That was wow. Awesome. 
uh, David Levy uh, was on, Don Nab, um, you know, David Iker with his uh, Dave's Exotic Deep Sky Objects, but also kind of tutoring us on, you know, the science, scientific process, you know, what's the difference between an idea, a hypothesis, a theory, and a scientific law, you know, so... Um, it's interesting that, uh, you know, scientific fact never actually worked in there because, you know, you get a observation that is really compelling, you know, uh, that goes against, you know, everything else that's out there. Um, then sometimes they have to go back to the drawing board, <laughs> even so the high, all the, the established type of things. The hypothesis determines the... Um actual determination of yeah so in a hypothesis you would have done you would have taken an idea and you would have done some experiments okay to support you know make the hypothesis stronger you know so mm -hmm. it's kind of like in hindsight you know it's not really a hypothesis until you've kind of fleshed some of these things out and then people start to look at them uh you're starting to maybe get some peer review uh, things going, but then it gets stronger and your experiments better and, uh, you know, and they're different experiments looking, you know, maybe at different wavelengths using different things, maybe combining radio observations with, you know, some sort of, you know, you know, light spectrum observation, um, you know, and, you know, I mean, they have so many uh, advanced ways to, you know, speckle interferometry, I mean, all kinds, you know, uh, all kinds of ways to uh, measure and look at things. But once you've got, you know, you're working all this together and every time you keep coming up with the same kind of conclusion, yeah, that starts to make it into a theory, okay? And um, so... And theories, uh, you know, and so as David Eicher said, once once it gets into the theory stage, if you're a practicing scientist, you don't just throw out a theory. You have to, you know, that's that's kind of a thing that you're. Uh, and then it's you have to. Like. But you know, if your experiment proves the theory wrong, yeah, then yeah. that's that experiment has to be repeatable. Okay. And then you're going to have a debate. You're going to have, to have other ways to look at it. Going, okay, well, if looking at it this way uh, uh, refutes the theory, okay, well, when we look at it this way, it should also refute the theory. You know, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like that. But once you do, and the and the theory is crushed, you know, it's back to the drawing board again, right? So, and these these things, I mean, they go on for years and years, decades. You know, and so we're still working on Einstein's theories, you know, right? And so eventually, uh, I believe that, the, that you know, relativity yeah. will become a scientific law, you know. So, um, yeah, so we had Dustin Gibson on from OPT, you know, and he talked to, about the TEDx speaking experiment, experiment, experience. <laughs> He wants me to do a TED talk, and I'm like <laughs> no. stumbling all over my words and stuff like that. Um, uh, Maxi Flores, of course, was on with us. Uh, uh, Maxi's uh, uh, images and his experience in, in being in, uh, an amateur astronomer in Argentina, starting off with like the most modest of of equipment. You know, it's just. You know, a modified cell phone, and uh, <laughs> that's amazing. I think he had a one fourteen reflector or something to start off with. Um, Robert Reeves, you know, expert on the moon and stuff. It would have been, it would be cool to take like some of your drawings and match yeah. those up to some of Robert Reeves' photographs and just sure. compare, you know, what you're seeing, what he's grabbing. I um, got to know the question though: the crater. How can you see across it? Yeah, we got to ask that question. That's yeah. Right. Seth Shostak popped in, um, uh, you know, and uh, uh, it was great to hear his take on uh, life in the universe. 
Uh, we want to thank Seth for taking the time to do that. Uh, he is scheduled to be a co-host next week um, for the 118th Global Star Party. I'll probably, you know, uh, his talks take a little bit more time. I think I'm going to uh, make sure that he gets that time next week. Uh, Molly Wakeling, of course, on with an, another Astronomy uh, presentation and, you know, uh, ga gra grabbing live images for us of the Al Nebula. Marcello Souza, you know, he's he does this IMAA, uh, it's the international, um, I always forget what the acronym is, but it's I thought space. it was, I'm an astronomer. I'm, yeah, an I'm a astronomer. astronomer. <laughs> That's right. I, I am, am a <laughs> astronomer. Yes. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know how many people watching the program know this, but uh, Marcello was trained as a cosmologist, you know, and so he's he does really know this stuff and um, uh, gets really deep into it. He has a Ph.D. He hates, hates to have people call him Dr. Souza. Ooh, you know, I think the doctor's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he is every bit of that. Uh, Cesar Brollo, who uh, we love to have on, uh, whether his equipment's working or not. So, um, but, uh, you know, he he got to work for a little while and then we started watching and it's like somebody's looking over your shoulder and, you know, that's when all everything goes haywire. Adrian Bradley, um, you know, showing us beautiful nightscapes, as he always does. And of course you, John. So thank you. It's been a great on. night. Uh, yeah. Awesome uh, yeah. tonight. The, yeah. the lineup party is fun to do, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's great. It's so yeah. fun to share. Uh, you know, I just want people to know uh, this summer to try to get out and the planets are going to come. They're all going to align. You heard like this is coming again. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. asking me and there's going to be some great views. So uh, get some instruments, uh, get some good eyepieces and, and show your friends and family. Yeah. And or that's get, what I'm going to be doing. Get you anything know? and get, you know, dig your telescope. If you got a telescope up in the attic, dig it out. You know, even if it's a, a small 60 millimeter refractor, you know, you can still do so much, you know. Um, yeah, the moon, the moon, you don't need much, you, but binoculars, you, yeah, you know, Saturn, Jupiter, you know, and share, share the experience, go to do some sidewalk astronomy or something. You'll find that that is so enjoyable, you know, and everybody does it. I mean, we, we get, that's the juice for us, you know, so um, our audience, uh, Andrew Corkill's out there. I, I don't know. Uh, Andrew, are you watching Global Star Party while you're doing observing tonight i think he said it's clear oh nice in california so yeah that's that's where i'm at uh, yeah he, he's got to yeah. get he's got to get up to pinos and uh at the premier star parties this summer and and uh, we'll be up there with the big dobs man yeah we're, we're ready to share some views with some uh some people that you know are, are tuned in you know go up to the to the summer star party in California. That's one of them you can go to Mount Pinos. Um, Mount Pinos is it's called the summer star party. Well, it, it's just, we you guys are, call it summer star. Party. Yeah. Cause it's summer and we star party, but I mean, oh, there you go. You know, in, in the summer, you know, right now is springtime. So it's galaxy season. This is what I look forward oh, to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Molly I love galaxies too. I do. Yes. I mean, that, and, and, uh, in Como Bernices, there's uh, the most amazing, yeah, I hope I pronounced that right. There's the most amazing uh, Keynes Venet, Venetici. How do you say? Oh, yeah, I know. Sorry. I always stumble on that, but uh, Can, the galaxy, I always said so you'd call it Canis Venetici or something, but there's oh, so yeah. many big galaxies that you don't even need a, a, that big of a scope to see them. You just need to yeah. get it to the dark site and, um, and then summer, you know, then like everything Adrian was showing us, that's like the showpiece stuff, the lagoon oh, yeah. on the Triffid, the Eagle, you know, all that. That's such a great swath of sky. Yeah. And the center of our galaxy is in the teapot, right? Somewhere yeah. near the teapot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
And wasn't it fun tonight? I mean, here we are. Yeah. You know, we're, we it, in one night we get to see southern live southern hemisphere views. I know, and all the way up to northern hemisphere views live. Um, Somebody's got to do that that uh, connected galaxy and then show that like M eighty two or something. Uh, it's just so big, and we're so far away from the center, but it's just so big you can't even comprehend how yeah. how big it is, and and it's just really great yeah, and it's just yeah. one galaxy in our yeah vast there's got to be the underlying this vast i want to we live seth. in <laughs> i didn't want to interrupt seth because he is the man and i just want to bite my tongue and listen because yeah 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 i wanted to ask how many potential chances could there be for life in our galaxy if you well, take every I mean he he gambled he, in 2012 he he gambled that uh by was it 20 2035 I think he 35 said 35 or 36 or something he, yeah you know he's basically saying look I'll buy everybody a cup of coffee if if we don't find life before that you know so uh, I think they already have uh maybe on Mars microbiological life uh you know, perhaps, 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 but you know, it could be from here on Jupiter or Saturn, you know, so, uh, you know, that's, when, that's great work though. Yeah. When I went to one of my last trips to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, uh, uh, Linda Spilker, uh, who still at the time working on Cassini, you know, she was, she was talking to me, uh, as, uh, as we were watching um, uh, David Steinfeld, he was making uh, bricks out of lunar soil. So they had real lunar soil and they were microwaving it and making, you know, just to show the concept that they could melt lunar soil oh, and, and make build. bricks. Okay, and so right. this is... They want to do this uh, because if they if they they can use a a building material that's already there plenty right. plenty there they just got to melt it okay uh, but the uh, radiation protection of the mm. lunar soil is it's incredible. good and the regolith and they, yeah and so they but you know I turned to Linda and I said so. What, you know, how serious are you guys about finding life elsewhere in our solar system? I said, do you think that you're going to find it? And she was basically saying, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And yes, we're going to find life, you know. So it was just like, no question. Not like, well, maybe we'll find life or, you know. And she could have couched it a million different ways, but it was so direct, so matter of fact, you know. Uh, and I so was life, like, life in Jupiter's moons, you know, the, the moons, when they flew by Io, they saw it was volcanic. They never expected that, seeing those giant plumes, yeah, right? Right. And, and uh, they're like taffy. So the gravity of Jupiter is tugging on them so much that it's like they just get hot inside. Yeah. So yeah. that ice planet could have like those thermal vents underneath the ocean. Right. Well, and, you see and all the dark lines that's in the yeah. Ice. What is that bacteria? You know. Well, you know, like knows, when they, but... you see the red stuff in uh, the Antarctic, it's algae. It's bad algae. We don't want that because it, it it'll uh, heat the planet if there's too much of it. But what about Pluto? It's life, had all that right? Red stuff, right? It's life. So, so you know, it's tough. Uh, yeah. Life will find a way. Life right? does find a way. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, uh, Seth also mentioned uh, something about, you know, well, what if they release all the atomic bombs on Earth? And I remember in a previous talk, he, he basically pointed this out. It won't kill all the humans. Right. You know, that it would kill 30 percent of them. You know, I mean, as he said, it would be a horrible day. It's yes, it's so good. funny. You said <laughs> it only kill thirty percent of them, and I encourage you, you know, to try. <laughs> it's like Seth. We don't need any more encouragement. <laughs> I need to ask him where you go to to survive inside a mountain or I don't know underground. Uh, but, 
preferably, yeah, something that can absorb a lot of radiation. But, yeah. you know, we, we always think in terms of total annihilation and doomsday, you know. Uh, and even Stephen Hawking mentioned, you know, that, you know, maybe we destroy ourselves in some cataclysmic, you know, nuclear That's change it. or something like that. But uh, apparently we don't have enough nuclear bombs to do that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was thinking that uh, if the alien life was out here and, and they would have already destroyed us if they were like, you know, bad aliens. Uh, I think they might be benign and, you know, hopefully. I, just, I think it, I think if they, if something has detected life here, that mm -hmm. they're just, you're just not, I mean, we wouldn't, you know, John, if you yeah. and I were doing the, the, you know, we were out there in the spacecraft and we found life on a planet, we ain't going down there. No, no. We're because go, wow, you this know. is really interesting. Hopefully they don't yeah. see us. <laughs> We're, we're just observers. We'll go know? back right away and report back, you know, after we took a zillion images, right? So, yeah, <clears throat> but that's that would be the extent of it, you know, so sure. anyhow, John, okay. thank you very much. Yes, thank sir. You. I want to thank the audience. Thank you um, again. Thanks to all the presenters and, you know, but uh, we love our global audience as well. And um, uh, we'll be back April 4th for the 118th Global Star Party. And then there's gonna be a little bit of a break because we've got Northeast Astronomy Forum. I'll probably be do, doing some live broadcasts from there. And uh, we're gonna go see some of our clients, our dealers on the East Coast. And, um, and then we'll be back um, certainly in May to do another run of Global Star Party, so. Perfect. Gives me, gives me some time to create some more works. I'm running out of it. <laughs> yeah, get to work, John. <laughs> I have to do right. one a week at least, you know, maybe <laughs> two. <laughs> All right. Well, All have righty. a great evening. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you.